The Passion of Jesus I Was Thinking of You Written by Miss Lorianne Matisse Read for you by Chiquito Joachim Crasto Scene 23 Setting Golgotha Matthew Chapter 27 Verses 45 to 50 Darkness continued to cover the earth until my death. Even the birds were confused and stopped chirping, thinking it was night time. I recalled the words of Amos, who prophesied, Woe unto you who desire the day of the Lord! To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. As if a man did flee from a lion, and a bear met him, or went into the house, leaned his hand on the wall, and a serpent bit him, shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark with no brightness? Amos, chapter 5, verses 18 to 20. Everyone noticed the ominous sky. An eclipse of the sun only happens when the moon is directly beneath the sun and the earth, blocking out its light. This day of my death there is a full moon, because it is Passover. The moon is on the far side of the earth, far away from the sun. But regardless, this day the sun refused to shine. A supernatural eclipse of the sun took place for three hours. The three hours are symbolic of the three days I will lay in the tomb. Death on a cross was most commonly precipitated by cardiac arrest, initiated by consequential loss of oxygen in the blood, severe pain, body blows, and breaking of the large bones. The attending Roman guards could only leave the site after the victim had died and were known to precipitate death by means of deliberate fracturing of the tibia, the larger bone of the leg between the knee and the ankle, and or the fibula, the smaller bone between the knee and the ankle. They might also spear stab wounds into the heart, or deliver sharp blows to the front of the chest, or even build a smoking fire at the foot of the cross to asphyxiate the victim faster. I would have no bones broken as it was prophesied, and with the black night of day the soldiers were leery to approach me at this point, let alone break my bones. I could barely breathe. My breath was wavered and forced. My body shook violently from the pain and blood loss. I am now suffering, not only because I have been forsaken by those I came to save, not only because of the physical pain I am enduring, but because of the complete lack of light that I am experiencing. I had endured all of this in order to be obedient to my father, with whom I had walked closely with during my time on the earth. The fellowship with my father, who gives every good gift and is perfect from above. His presence is in me and with me as I fulfilled my ministry. Even as a young boy, I could feel his perfect love with me at all times. The rejection of my people and the physical suffering is nothing compared to the rejection I feel as the presence of my father withdraws from me. Sin is dark and has no light in it. The father does not dwell in sin or have any part with it. Sin is separate from God. As I bear the excessive and ominous burden of the sin of humanity, I bear it in human flesh, alone, alone, alone. The Father did not send an angel to strengthen me like he did in the garden last night. He did not transfigure me as he did on the Mount of Transfiguration. He did not shelter me as he did when Herod's men raided Israel in order to kill all of the male babies when I was newly born. He did not hide me in his presence as he did when I walked away from the religious leaders who wanted to kill me before it was my time to die. I could not feel him at all. Out of my obedience to the Father, 
I would allow the complete wrath of a holy and righteous God to descend on me. My people of Israel had rejected me. Those whom I had been raised with in my local synagogue had scorned me, criticized me, and had finally condemned me to death. The representative of the temple who proclaimed to be worshipping God treated me worse than a common criminal. Those who are ignorant often ridicule what they do not understand. The priests laughing nearby are the perfect example. Eleven of my disciples had not understood me even though they followed me closely and were dearly devoted to me. They had deserted me when I sweat drops of blood in the Garden of Decision. My right-hand man Judas had betrayed me with a kiss. My beloved Peter cursed and swore he did not know me as I was on my way to be incriminated for telling the truth. The religious authorities accused me before Anais, who later sent me to Caiaphas, then to the Sanhedrin, who spit in my face, beat me, and mocked me. The Roman soldiers have used me as a punching bag. The Sanhedrin did not go with me into the praetorium where I was condemned to die, so they would not defile themselves before the Passover feast. The crowds of people, some of whom had followed me for three and a half years, chose Barabbas to be released rather than me. Pilate advocated for my life, but ended up rejecting me when he washed his hands, releasing himself of the responsibility pertaining to my case. Herod abandoned me when he passed me back to Pilate. Pilate relinquished himself to the people's wishes. The rejection continued as I was mockingly called King of the Jews. Even the thief on my left rejected me. All of this rejection I could bear, but the rejection from my Father in heaven at this hour of my death, after enduring the most humiliating and torturous of deaths, was more than I could bear. Ellie, Ellie, Lema Sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I screamed this with my very last bit of strength, fulfilling the prophecy in Psalm 22. Here I was, nailed to the cross in a position that is impossible to maintain, where my knees are flexed at an approximately forty-five degree angle, which forced my weight to bear on the muscles of my thighs. Every few minutes my thighs and calves would cramp severely. Any weight on my feet only worsened the pain in the areas where the nail was driven through. When the strength of my muscles of my lower limbs tired, the weight of my body had to be transferred to my wrists, my arms, and my shoulders. The weight of the sin of humanity dislocated my shoulders, elbows, and wrists, each in a matter of minutes after being hung on the cross. My arms were now nine inches longer than before, and still they stretched out to receive you unto myself. For I was thinking of you, as I am thinking of you now. As David prophesied, I was poured out like water. After my wrists, elbows, and shoulders were dislocated, the weight of my body on my upper limbs caused traction forces on the pectoral muscles of my chest wall. The force caused my rib cage to be pulled upwards and outwards in a most unnatural state. My chest wall was permanently in a position of maximal respiratory expiration. In order to exhale, I was physiologically required to force my body upward. As I did this, it required me to push down on the nails in my feet to raise my body in order to allow my rib cage to move downwards and inwards. Twelve inches up, twelve inches down. Up, down, up, down, up, down while my blood poured out of my hands, my feet, my back, my face, my head, all the while enduring the wrath of my father. This process of breathing caused excruciating pain. Excruciating is a word derived from crucifixion. Crucifixion is a medical catastrophe. 
the fact that an innocent man was made to endure crucifixion is a calamity all of humanity on which needs to be examined you might say i don't have any guilt i realize guilt will be an unpopular phrase in the twenty-first century nevertheless i took your guilt on the cross and nailed it to myself as the six hours of the crucifixion wore on i became less able to bear the weight in any part of my body the fear of suffocating was terrifying but the pain in my shattered nerves in my wrists exploded with every slight movement as i heaved myself up covered in blood sweat and humiliation from being naked as the leaders of the jewish people the crowds the thief and the soldiers were continuing to jeer swear and laugh at me i went inward i had to find a place in myself that would encourage me to stay on this cross of suffering i had to reflect on the creation my creation of humankind i had to reflect on the beginning in order to finish i was the author and the finisher of the faith of this world i had to remember why i created adam and eve in the first place i desired fellowship with those who were made in my image i created humans to have a heart and soul to be deeply humane to be compassionate and caring strong and sensitive to tend to the garden and watch over the animals i created adam and eve to perfectly fit together as a puzzle to complete each other in love and to create families in order to love one another and help each other through good times and bad all that i created was good the father and i with our holy spirit created the heavens and the earth out of a void we filled the void with the most beautiful and enlightened creation we moved on the face of the waters we created light we divided the light from the darkness creating day and night we divided the waters to create the heavens and oceans on the earth we created the land and it was good we brought forth trees and vegetation we created animals and sea creatures of every kind and it was good what we created was and is good when we created man and women we wanted them to have a sense of self we created them with a will we created them in our image and wanted them to enjoy the creation and also create many exquisite works as they lived on the earth but many of these works went sour so much evil would be done over centuries of time we knew that man and woman had the ability to sin we knew they would so we created a plan from the beginning of time to absolve sin and make a way back to the garden me i was the plan not a doctrine not a religion not a path that is difficult to understand no our plan the plan of elohim the first name of god presented in the bible the creator the god in one was to send me jesus to earth in the form of a man at an exact time and place prophesied through prophets throughout thousands of years wearing a scarlet thread of redemption for the fall of humanity at this specific moment in history my death on the cross would become the scapegoat for all sin just as a lamb had to be slaughtered in the temple i had to be slaughtered for humankind i took the wrath on myself because i was god and was with god in the creation i the messiah took the place of judgment for my human beings because of love love kept me nailed to the cross not power i had all the power i could have swallowed up the earth just as i created it i could have destroyed it i could have sent a great fire from heaven and devoured every one who stood near me at the crucifixion fear did not keep me nailed to the tree i had no fear of man i had no fear of my father my devotion to him did not come out of submission due to fear 
it came out of obedience, because in our plan there was no other way. I had pleaded with him in the garden. Is there any other way? Please let this cup pass from me. But even as I prayed, I knew there was no other way. I was the designated way, me now, here, forsaken, lonely, desecrated, the way, the truth, and the life, me, a person, Yahweh in human form, forever the face and heart of God, the Messiah, the personal, pivotal, poignant mystery of Yahweh. Shema Israel Adunai Eloheinu Adunai Echad. Hear Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one, one God who created the heavens and earth, who sent his Son to die on the cross for you. Darkness covered the earth, because darkness comes in when the Father is out. God the Father had to separate himself from the cross because the sin of humanity was so ugly. And does it not need to be so? Would you want a God who is not righteous, holy, and pure? What sets Yahweh apart from every other God is the personal sacrifice made out of love. It was for the love of the whole world that Yahweh sent himself in the form of Jesus to die for his people. People over thousands of years will talk about energy and molecules colliding in random occurrences, creating big bangs, something out of nothing. But the truth is, my molecules are not colliding in space in a random pattern. My creation is one of perfect order to a perfect plan of redemption that is historically recorded in a timeline of events and in the stars so that anyone who wants to find Yahweh, the Redeemer, can find Him. Anytime, anywhere, anyone who calls on my name, Jesus, he or she is mine. As I labored to keep breathing until the redemptive work of the cross was completed, I was thinking of each man, woman, or child who has or ever will inhabit the planet Earth. As I looked inward, to find the place of love for humanity, to keep my vision so that I would not perish, feeling completely lost and forsaken in the darkness that surrounded me, as I experienced this momentary separation from God the Father, I set my face like a flint. I kept my focus on you, for I was thinking of you, as I am thinking of you now. When you feel forsaken and lost, when darkness surrounds you, I am with you forever, because I love you. Eve's Memoirs and Other Books and Art by Laurie Matisse, available at www.evesmemoirs.com www.lauriematisse.com www.mysticcenter.com Laurie's blog, Weaving Light lauriematisseblog.wordpress.com For information on Eve the Musical, contact lauriematisse at gmail.com End Times Info www.mysticcenter.com www.calculatingthelast7.com Dot com. Support the work of translating this book into other languages. HTTPS colon two forward slashes www.patreon.com forward slash Laurie Matisse.